your host, Sean Lynn, in the pub for a dram with friends where we talk about faith, family, food, and fun. Pull up a chair and I'll pour you a drink. Episode 83. Welcome to the pub. We haven't been here for a little while in person. So we have John Perry telling us, how can I make your day better? I did that. It was just, I was, <laughs> okay. that was pretty cool. That's where I was, got into it. I was writing, I was, poetry was, I was writing poetry all the time. I was just screenplays. I was writing and, um, I started writing what he was like when you go to school, the, the school or the business and see them playing in front of you, whatever yeah. that is. When the actors are down there, you actually see them live. Oh, okay. Improv or? Where I did, hey, I did that too. I did there you the, go. You know, the, um, the um, whose line is it anyways? Yeah. I, I, so they all came from Granville Island in Vancouver, right? That's where okay. it all started. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I did the qu- fall four courses there at the, at the club and everything. Oh, yeah. I just, I was right where he wanted to go. And then I got, I did a movie set with John Goodman and John Cusack here. Um, two months after I got here. Oh, wow. And then um, we had a baby and I just, things needed to be changed. So, so I, well, there's no story to that too. It's a funny one. But um, then I just went back into sales and then I just, because I was good at it. And so why not continue on and get better? There you go. Well, we're here so, talking to... Uh, John Perry, and we've already started the conversation, it appears, because he's telling us some fabulous stories, and I don't want to lose them. So <laughs> w- welcome to a Dram with Friends. We are extremely blessed to have John Perry in the pub with us today. John, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a blessing to be here. And uh, who is John Perry, for those that don't know? Well, I always like to start off when people call me as, Hi, I'm John or hi, it's John, how can I make your day better? And that's really who I am for the last uh, 40 years since I became a Christian. Uh, the way God's kind of brought us up, or Jesus brought us up, right? Uh, I am married to a beautiful woman who's a medic. I have three children, um, 35, which is, uh, has a little girl, and pregnant with another one, which is really exciting. Um, um, and then... One is a professional scuba diver, a skydiver, where he's, going, he's just doing his final little number, or he needs so many to get it. And okay. Close to that, and, and Danny is just going for his combine, and hopefully he gets picked up by one of the... Um, CFL teams. CFL, thank you. Wow. So, what it comes down to is, who is John Perry? It is when I met Candace and I came up here to ask her to marry me, I asked her what church you was baptized in and she told me what it was and I said, can you take me there? So she went in there and it happened to be open, which is of course, God had it all set up for her and all that <laughs> stuff. And we went to the front and I got down on my knees and I asked her to marry me. Wow. Because there's, if, if it's all about God, then he's the only one that needs to be there to watch me asking her to get married. So that's who I am. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to share how I did it, but because uh, it falls very short <laughs> of that story. That's amazing. So you you talk, when we talked earlier, you talked about you were raised never knowing God, like you were raised in a, a secular house, right? Or... Yes. Um, my dad, well, we had one of those interesting lives, right? So... <clears throat> first dad they didn't love each other I know the whole story it's no one go oh but my mom was a single mother with two kids mm-hmm. and my dad was separated with five kids right so um, we all got together and they had two more together so it was nine yours mine and ours oh wow <laughs> right yeah. so it was it was an interesting time too but I'm going to go back now just so I can explain where this is coming from okay dad what, what was grew up in the church when he was young, right? Like he did the stuff where he helped the priest and everything, and and I, he he stopped it. And then I guess I heard later on that it, it was a, his goal not to let us 
or teach us anything about God, which is interesting. So um, I never was brought up with God. So I didn't have morals, really. So I needed money, I'd go steal something. If I, need, if I was angry, I'd go break something. You know, I'd do this. I'd do, like, just what I needed at the moment. Because it was just like, if you don't have God, and he's the one that brings in the love and the morals, then there's nothing there. So after I, when I became a Christian, um, yeah, that's a kind of a twilight zone over a, many different time periods, uh, <laughs> events that I had to go through to make myself stronger. I finally saying in the back of a church door saying, I'm not going out the back door of God. Right? So after that, that was my journey starting at 18. I had no idea who God or Jesus was, and the uh, Holy Spirit was just sort of working on me. And it's all about, and the interesting thing, it's all about saying yes, right, when God calls, right? When you called mm -hmm. me the other day, um, it was yes. Uh, when... Well, you, you answered the phone. How can I make your day better? Like, well, yeah. what a positive outlook. <laughs> but that's our whole job. He says in the Bible, you know, God first. Yeah. And then he says, then everyone else. And it doesn't say us in there. <laughs> so I just, I always focus on that. So, but uh, over, the, the yeses came from is, I was working on a, in a barn, it's a, a barn. I was working, I was playing in the pool hall, hanging in the pool hall. Yeah. And some guy comes in and says, you know, uh, someone needs to help you. If you need two guys at the barn. So I go, okay. I needed some money. I'll go do it. And this beautiful family, Christian family. And um, he, one day he came up to me and he says, the Catholic church or something needs a, a, someone to teach six-year catechism. And I was like, well, number one, no. And number two, what's that mean? What's that? <laughs> and he explained it to me. And I was like, no. And he kept on saying, you got to do this. And it's fine. I said, okay, yes, I'll do it. I had no idea who God is. I have no idea anything because I was never brought up in this way. So I get, get there and I get there on Monday because Friday is the first class. And, you know, and Sister Eleanor spends the next three, four months teaching me everything that I need to teach to her. But she was my one-on-one -on -one teacher from God teaching me wow. about who God is and what the church is all about. And yeah, and then she tried to make me help me singing, but that didn't work out. <laughs> but yeah, it was Sister Eleanor. So it was, it's always about saying yes to God. And even if things get really, really tough, it's about God first. And that's how I've always tried to live since. Well, and and that's where it amazes me talk, like when I called. Because things are a little tough in your life right now for you My and wife them. and kids, yeah. yes. And, uh, and you answer the phone how can i make your day better because most people recoil into that you're embracing if if you want to share where you're at right now with the the audience and and just why why it's a tough time for your family right now i will do that um about January, february February last year, it was my wife's birthday. We always have, you know, try to get our families to have birthdays to mm -hmm. celebrate their day. Um, about four hours, three o'clock in the morning, I had a seizure. Uh, a, a bad seizure, I found out, where I had aphasia, which means I can't speak. So they were saying, What's, what year is it? I'm going, potato! You know, so... Uh, it got me to the hospital. It took about a little while to do it. Finally got me to the hospital, and we... Um, got an MRI, and then I just got on with my life because I figured that there was something going on, right? So I started fixing some things up in my life with, or with my family. But then we get the, the MRI a month, at the end of the month, and it showed me that I have a gigliano tumor something like that right here, and they had to get me into surgery right away or I would be, you know, with God already by June, which is like, okay, let's do this, right? Which is off my bucket list getting bald because yeah. that's off there. And then I'm shaved my head off again Tuesday because our next one's Wednesday. So I'm bald again, off bucket list. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was just it, that. Had, so they had the surgery right away. They, they took off as much as they could so I can continue to speak, but I don't have really any longer short term memory. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think of like t for the now. Like, I, I'll forget what we spoke about 
you know, in, in 20 minutes. That's why we're recording now. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just, um, so we went into radiation. They set that up for a six-week course, uh, 30 episodes, and then I was on chemotherapy for six weeks or six months. And uh, the tumor wasn't growing back every time we did an MRI, and it was looking good because everybody has the hope. Yeah. And um, the MR we did the MRI uh, about three weeks ago, and there's a new tumor on the outside of the, uh, of the brain now, which is needs to be cut out, which is we're doing this again on Wednesday. So um, we're videotaping it because we're going to because my boy one of my boys are in Saskatoon so he's going to be on the phone watching the son's going to be shaving it off Candace is going to be you know keeping it going so yeah so you know it's all about family yeah so I'm now going in for a second tumor and then unfortunately which unfortunately I say this for my wife and my kids that six to nine months they're saying if mm -hmm. everything goes well like I said God's hands it could be longer yeah but like that's the, that's the numbers that they're saying so I'm just enjoying each day as we go on. But that's really what my wife and uh, the kids are silently struggling with, right? I, that's what I've been trying to focus on the last year is, is God's blessed us. Like it, my grandfather had a heart attack and died in five minutes, right? So, you know, it's one of those things where yeah. it happens, it, it goes, right? And, and there's no memories or anything like that, right? Yeah. So this last year, I find, I, I make it past the first June, so everything after that's a blessing, and I spent a whole year getting closer, helping my kids and my wife understand more, you know, trying to get them to open up more, you know what I mean? Because it's going to happen. Yeah. So how can I help them get going and, and move forward so they can, when it's my last day and, and I got to see Jesus and everything like that is... Why, have them set up so that they're strong enough to keep going because they're going to be sad, they're going to have their tears or whatever else they'll go through. But God will be there for them and they know that, you know, what we talked about and, and they're all going to be okay. And then Candace, you know, she's just amazing. So That is a blessing. And you're, so our, our theme for this year's conference is Momentum Mori, Remember Your Death. And it, it hit home for me uh, in... December when my dad passed away suddenly because we weren't ready for that because I was sitting with him in the emergency hours earlier joking with the doctors and nurses and saying see you tomorrow and the, I didn't get to see him tomorrow so I, I hope that your wife and kids do see this as a blessing that they're getting to walk this with you and uh we're hoping that we can, by re recording this and, and maybe encouraging brothers to walk alongside you so that your wife and family and your sons know they're not alone and, and that you're surrounded by a community and you're going to a better place. That's what our, that's what our hope and dreams and goals are, is to get there, right? <laughs> I can't... It's... Sad and, 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 and selfish for me, right? My yeah. sadness is always going to be for my wife and my kids. It, yeah. It's just the way it is because it's like when you're losing something, I, it's sad for them. And, and the interesting thing is because it's not about me, I've never focused, I'm trying not to ever focus on. Yeah. It, it's about me. Enjoy what God's blessed me. But the, the, the selfish part on it, which is also, I guess, the loving part on it, is when my last day is there, here, then I close my eyes, I open up, and Jesus is there. Like, it's a win-win. Like, I've been spending, when I became a Christian, when I was 18, right, yeah. and, and going through all this, and then I spent the last 15 years doing all the research through all the scholars and trying to understand all the proof, and there's proof that God made this. This is the coolest thing is there's so much proof that God mm -hmm. was there and Jesus, actual proof that Jesus was here based on the old old scripts and everything, and People aren't really realizing that he's always been here. So that's what my, but my whole thing is, is to be here. And then I got to go see him. You know what I mean? So there you go. Well, <laughs> sorry. It's just that, that that's well, my happiness in there. And, because and that's where that communion of saints. So I can't tell you how many times I've called on my dad for intercession because that's where we believe he is, is 
is there and he's got front row seats and probably has a better connection than I do <laughs> to, to make things happen. So why not avail yourself of that? And, and it's not like you're gone, gone. So if you, if you hear some requests about God squad, <laughs> when you're up there, uh, yeah, do us a favor and put in a good word. So, oh yeah, but it, it, it's it's what it's all about. Like we get stuck up, and here's the inter- here's a couple interesting things. So, um, I had when when all this happened, like where, where my sadness is because of my closeness with God and, and the way everything is set up and how I feel about how he, close it is. I, I'm hopefully, and I'm praying that I'm going and hanging with Him, right? Um, but the sadness is my kid. So we're, I've had my tears about, you know, what, you know, not why this is happening, because it happens. Yeah. You know, we live in a, a world which is designed, not intentionally, but is designed to beat us up, knock us down. People beat us up, knock us down at, at school, at work, at this, you know, everywhere. And it's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it, right? So what I tell my kids is your best is just your starting point. Right, because every day is our best. This is my best. This is your best. But how do you get better than who we are now? And it's like we got to figure it out. So every day you try to be better. Right, your best is just your starting point. Like there's so many. I feel that there's a lot of people that are just, you know, they're lost and and they're sad. Right, and they don't mm-hmm. know what to do. And God and Jesus, they're they're right there all the time, saying, "I love you. I'm here for you." And and we expect something else. We're looking for those UFOs. You know, God gave us all this and we're it's not enough we need a ufo you know what i mean or you know what i mean or yeah. you're looking for up, in, up up in space for the answer well if you look inside and see you know the how we're born and how we're made and, yeah. and everything it's just it's a gift it is you know it, and it's just that well and that's oh. where science the more they research the more intricate the world and life is and it's like I I say it takes a lot more faith to believe there isn't a God than yes. there is a God. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and and it's everywhere. But that's where all the evidence now leads is yeah. is to God. So it's just that's why I try to help with posts every time I do stuff or anything like. Just as a reminder yeah. to people, just saying, hey, you know, maybe you forgot, but here's uh, a mass, yeah, or something like. You know, I mean, it's always about helping other people. You know, so I don't have any. Except for my wife and kids, don't get me wrong. I, that's yeah. where the sadness comes in. Yeah. But I lived a beautiful life. I I, I was not going to let the world take me down, you know. And I was bullied. I was abused. I was beat up. I was in a different school every year. I didn't have any friends. Like I could make all the stories, but it was my past. So how do I make my past make me stronger? So and yeah. I just when I was eighteen, I, I chose that whatever I, uh, however I grew up or whatever before that. I do the complete opposite because that's what realistically what Jesus wanted us to do. <laughs> there you go. And, and that's what I did for the next 40 years is how could I get better trying to help that one person. I always call it being one of a hundred, right? Where maybe it takes someone a hundred different people or experiences to become a Christian. And I might be one of that hundred. So, you know, I just try to be that one of that hundred to somebody. And that's awesome. That's awesome. So, obviously family is very important to you and which is important but one of the things we talk about uh, is is a dad dish or uh, so is there was there a dish that you prepared for the family that kept them coming back to the the supper table <laughs> <laughs> there is a dish that got them to come to the supper table that starved to death <laughs> <laughs> so um Candace when we got married, one of the things she wanted to do is I was from Cal- Vancouver and she was from Calgary. Okay. And, and she, well, I'll give you a quick story. Is I was bartending at a nightclub in Vancouver and Candace happened to come into the bar, happened, flew in that night to see her friends to kind of fly out the next night or something like that. And they ended up at my nightclub, right? And she was there and then she asked me for a free beer and it's just like, or a free drink. And it's like, what? No, get away from me. Um, and then we just, things went from there, but like God, trust me, God brought that, us together. But um, for the next year, six weeks or seven weeks, we just spoke on the phone each night because you invite in, in Calgary. And then she, when I came up and married her, she says, I want to be a medic. 
and this is where it is. So you're going to get married, you got to move up here. And it's like, all right, <laughs> right? So I don't know where we're going now because that's how my brain works. It just disappears. But um, so that's how, that's where that one, and she's been doing that. What was your question? You got to help me again. Is there a dish that you oh, thank pre- you. prepared? Right. And then we had, you know, the kids and everything. And yeah. She made a very secondary comment after, you know, is I don't cook. <laughs> so I ended up doing breakfast, lunch for kids and her for dinner because it was just, she says she doesn't do it, so I do it. Like, there you it go. Would, like that's how we did our whole relationship. It was just like we shared everything, right? Okay. And then it was all about the kids. Yeah. Right? We didn't need the cars or the trips or the this or that. We got it. Everything went to the kids because that's what God brought us to have was the kids, right? We, I did all my stuff when I was young. You know what I mean? And that's why, the, again, it goes back to no regrets because I, I don't want to be on my deathbed, which is a funny thing because this is what I say to people. I don't want to be on my deathbed. You're above me and you're holding my hand and that music comes in. You know, there's always that soft music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and, yes. And I'm looking, uh, looking up and I go, I wish I did this. Yeah. And to me, it's like, no, 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 no. There's never a time in your life that I wish I did this. Do it. And that's what it's all about. That's why God gave it this world because he said, get out there and enjoy it. But you have to learn and grow and you have to support and do this. But don't not miss the world. So where the food comes back is just one of the many there you things go. that brings us. Well, out. and it... Food tends to bring people together, and that's why we, like, we started the barbecue outreach, and which you helped out uh, doing the high school barbecue for the grade ten retreat, and just just trying to create that welcoming atmosphere because it's easier to talk to people too about Jesus <laughs> and about faith when you're breaking bread. Yes, and so, uh, yeah. So, what? You, you've shared so much already, but... Am I monologuing? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just the, the wisdom is, it, it's, it's not often that you get to talk to somebody like yourself who's staring death in the face, let's say. Kind of cool, man. It's real. It, it, it's so it is, surreal. It's, it feels very real. Yeah. So what advice do you give, especially the young men, but men... What wisdom would you like to impart to them? Wisdom to, to impart to them. <laughs> God loves you. The world, the world is always going to kick the crap out of you. Whether you're ill, your family's ill, or friends are ill. Um, that's just life. And it's... It's not what happens, like I keep on saying this, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do about, about it. It's a guy named Mitchell, I think, it's his, his lines. But I, I've lived in chronic pain for 35 years. I've had three back surgeries, foot surgery, I've had two throat surgeries. I canceled four other surgeries because I, I, I hear I am having an end-of-life party <laughs> soon. Um, and it's just part of life. So I, with all that chronic pain, and we're talking where there's dies, I couldn't even lay in bed and roll over. So I have to lay in the blanket and pull the blanket to help me roll over. I, but I still had to go work. I had kids. You know, we had bills to pay. I'd drive 16, 20 hours to get someplace because it was part of it. But I'd be in pain. That's just life. So how do you get past life? How do you make it better? And that's why I say your best is just your starting point. Because every day is your best, right? But what, how can you do something a little better? Because no one else is going to do this for you. you got to do it yourself. The, oh, actually, let me go back. I apologize. For that. The only person that will help you do this is God. And, and you just got to put your faith in Him, right? Like, before all this was happening with me, life was too hard in the first place. Like, you know, I had kids. I, I, we had, they had school. I had work. I, my wife had work. We had bills. We had this. I gave it up to God. I, could, I couldn't even handle it when this was not happening. And, and now with this, I give it up to God because I can't do anything about it. So realistically, it's just like, get on with life. What can else can I, can I do? Like, for 40 years, I was um, in uh, business and in sales. Um, it became top sales. And uh, wrote, just finished writing a sales book last month and, or last year and sales training. 
course. And then this happened, which took away all my communications. So out of all those 40 years and all that knowledge I had, right now it's all gone. But God helped me and directed me to write a sales training book, which is about 370 pages. And I designed a 12-week sales training program because God knew and pushed me to do this. And, and I did, actually, uh, I did um, six or seven sales training videos so my family could see me talking and like that kind of stuff. But, but he had me do all these things because he knew what was happening. So I, 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 it was always, yes, 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 I do it, I do it. And then all of a sudden, seizure, surgery, boom, and now I have this new one coming up. So I can't talk, so what do I do? It, there's so many things to enjoy. Just because one part of your life is not working, or not to, to your satisfaction, or you're scared, or you don't know what to do, there's so many other things. You know, when, when I say, you know, hi, it's John, how can I make your day better? Well, how can I make your day better? Because I, I have God in my life. Yes. You know, so, you know, and it shocks people too. It's a really good one. Use it at, at where anytime someone calls you, say that with your name. Don't say my name. Um, how can I make your day better? Because honestly, no matter how angry they are or, or upset or however their day was, when you say that, you, you kind of shock them, right? And that's the whole idea about our, our world right now is we got in this lethargic lifestyle and you got to shock them back. And the only way to shock them back is to be better than who you are today. Yes, it's pain. Yes, it's hurting. Yes, things aren't going good for you. Trust me, I can tell you these stories. Um, but what can you do to make you better? And it's, it's only going to be, if you're going to go for a walk, start with one step. Not, don't have to walk a mile. Walk, take one step, then tomorrow two steps. If you're doing sit-ups, do, do one sit-up, then two, or, or talk, you know, talking or l l reading again. But just do something more each day. Because the world is to tear you down. And you're the only one with God is to pull you up. So believe in yourself. God loves you, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. You hit that one a home run. And uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard one to follow up with. And that's where I'm going to ask the men to, to join me as we, we pray. Like, please include John and his family in your prayers because that's prayers are powerful. They, they help us learn to accept as you have done, but they they can spark healing. Uh, I was in Israel and, and witnessed that some healing stuff. So I don't know what God's will is in your life. He he doesn't send me in. He just sends me in the plays. He never sends in the playbook. But uh, he, my prayer is is that his will be done, and if at all possible, a healing would take place for you. And my buddy Saint Joseph is is gonna join, and he he's a miracle worker. That guy. He uh, so. I'm asking the men to join and, and you know, other brothers out there that are in need and, and need somebody to walk with them. So Jeff Cavins on our rides talks about, uh, riding with your posse. So are there some go-to saints that I, I talked about St. Joseph, St. Michael's another big one for me, but are there some that you, uh, walk with or have helped you through this journey? Well, I have to say my first saint is St. John. And because I was getting back, when I became a Christian when I was 18, yeah. Yeah. I was in the Holy Rosary Cathedral in Vancouver, which is, again, a I got, beautiful that's a good place. story because <laughs> it, God took me to that to become baptized. It was a really cool thing. Uh, with, uh, I can't remember his name, so it'll come to me. Um, but they asked me, who's your priest and what who's it your who's your who's your patron saint yeah who's, who's your, your patron your, saint who's, just like, whose name do you take when you get uh, <laughs> I, confirmed I, I i have no idea because i was just became a christian and just you know it's just like boom yeah. it's like john <laughs> so um the beloved disciple exactly <laughs> but in the in the um new testament it's paul really i i just like listening to 
it, it, his stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's one of those guys that sinned all the time, like every one of us. And God says, okay, now it's time for you to come to me. You know what I mean? And, and it's just, we're talking about this, the, the pain that we're feeling. Like this guy had the, the was beat up. Mm -hmm. over and over and over on probably just saying you know you know what i mean you're going to keep on hurting and that's why when i like the pain for 35 years whatever it is it's just it's a part of life like there's no use focusing on it and whining about it every day because and i'm going to change the subject here because i'm going to forget the other one but um every day we got to start start off and offer our day and thank god for to be alive and every night we need to do the same thing as God and be grateful to God for being alive. And like, you know, we, get, we have water in a toilet right beside us. Like, we don't realize this, right? We're in warm water. We have clothes. Like, you know, it may not maybe a lot of food, but we have food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we live in, in a very free, free, free country. Um, but we all, if you start your day positive, every morning at 100%, that's why I tell my kids, actually, is you started at 100% thanking God and being happy and not letting anything tear you down. There's always things that are going to try to tear you down, people or, or comments or everything. But you know, start the day at, a, at 100%. And if you start complaining about somebody or, or the government or somebody, what someone said, or someone who drived in front of you, then you're down to 90% and 80%. And then at lunchtime, you're, your energy level's at 50%. And when you get home, you're at 20%. Just because of... of letting one thing bug you in the morning and and i tell my boy who's like with the football and everything like that is he has to be at 100 percent. so it doesn't matter what's happening you got to focus on being at 100 percent. there's always going to be people doing it but don't let it because if you're always positive and if someone cuts you off offer them god bless them and if and it'll go in your mind a thousand times every time you think god look after him god look after him god look after him because and then don't look at him when you drive by, right? <laughs> Honestly, because you always go, I knew that was it, that guy with that hat. Um, but it's, that's what, what it, we have to focus on is the um, being 100% every day, but it's being 100% with God, right? Because we don't want to get the negativity to control us because we get home and then we hit our kids and our, and our family, yeah. right? And then we're angry at them. And why? It's because someone cut us off at 9.30 in the morning. Which... Is illogical and but it's life. I know. So, so that's one of those things. You just you focus on try to always say God. If something bugs you, it's always a God. John, I wanna I wanna thank you for taking the time to come to the pub and And it's a and, beautiful pub. And share share your your life with us. Your uh, I can't thank you enough. And I don't know if you know, but the, the term whiskey, it comes from a Gaelic term called Ishkabaha, which means water of life. And my prayer is that, Lord willing, you are drinking that uh, soon, if that's God's will, and or sitting and enjoying old age, if, if that's God's will. So it's, uh, my prayer is that you lead many other souls to the true water of life. And by sharing your story, I'm, I'm sure it's going to inspire many. So thank you. I'm blessed to be here and be with you and your family. You're amazing. Well, we try. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say other thing is no matter what happens in life, God loves you so much. He made you for a reason. You know, believe in that and follow it. He loves you, man. Wow. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of A Dram with Friends. Like and subscribe. Go to all podcast platforms to look for it on podcast or go to godsquad.ca to support our mission.